Hi there, this is Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative, and my project today is a super cute, you're the best toucan card using the Toucan Party stamp set from Newton's Nook. But I wanted to take a second to dedicate this video to my father, who died on August 31st. If you are wondering where I've been for the last three weeks, um, that is where I've been. He was ill and then died um, in Charlotte, North Carolina, and after that I was with my sister uh, making arrangements and cleaning out his apartment and stuff. But it was, everything's okay. Um, and it was a peaceful death and he was very prepared. So you don't need to be too concerned about it, but I want to let you know where I was. So that was the cute stamp set. And now I'm gonna be stamping the images onto some Bristol Smooth cardstock using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I had not used my Spectrum Noir markers with a uh, Bristol Smooth paper before, so I wanted to try it out. And there were some good things about it, and there were some not so good things about it that um, hopefully I will be able to mention as as I show you my coloring on this. But as you can see, I stamped several a bunch of leaves and um, the toucan couple. So. I printed a picture of a toucan out from the internet so I could have a color reference as I was coloring. I do that a lot with uh, different animals, particularly anything that I'm not familiar with. So to color their yellow tummies, I'm starting out with CT1, and then I will add in some shading with CT3, um, again from my Spectrum Noirs, and I will blend with the CT1. And you're gonna see that the paper starts to bleed quite a bit. Um, it's not that big a deal because most of this is going to get covered up so you don't really even see that bleed in the end. Um, but there are some areas towards the end that where the bleeding is... I have to cover up the bleeding using my uh, fix-it trick that you'll see later. Um, the little red accents I did CR10 and then OR blended that out with OR1 because the accents are kind of like an orangey red so and I didn't quite have the right color just all on its own so that was why I had to blend the two together. Now for I'm calling this the female toucan I am using IG10 which is a very very dark gray and then I'm adding in IG8 which is like slightly lighter gray. Now you can tell it looks almost black um, but I wanted to make sure that the wing would look separate from the body when it was done. So here's, I'm using true black now around the wing and in certain areas. And then I'm gonna color the wing entirely IG-8. And it's kind of subtle, it might be a little hard to see on the video, but it does separate out, the wing separates out from the body. Like if I colored the whole body just true black, like it would just look like a big black blob. And you really don't want that. Um, I wanted to make sure that you could see the wing as a separate piece from the body. So using those different shades of dark, dark gray along with black allowed that to work. Um, I used TB3 for their feet and the little blue accents on their bills. And then I used CG1 as the base coat on the green. And then this is DR1 for like some of the red portions of the beaks at the very end. And that CG1 looked too light, so now I'm adding DG2, and then I'm gonna blend it out with the CG1 to get a really nice green color on their beaks with a bit of a highlight. And for the male, I'm using IG8 as the base coat for his body. I used more IG10 on her, um, and so I wanted to make sure that they would separate out from each other where they overlap kind of towards the bottom there. And then I'm gonna use True Black on his wing. And then I will add in a little bit of IG10 um, here and there to blend out like the tail and the body a little bit. And I'll actually come back again with the IG8 um, to blend all of it together kind of nicely. But using those three different shades um, of black and the two grays worked well to keep their bodies um, looking dark, but but also to keep their the pieces separated from each other. Now I wanted to pull some of the red from their beak into the flowers on the branch. So I used OR1 as, OR1 as the center, CR10 as the like center in the middle, and then DR1 as the outer piece of those flowers. And then I'm gonna blend it all together with the CR10, just to kind of 
bring some cohesion between the red and the, the little red accents on the, on the toucan and, and add some red into the branch. And to color my branch, I'm using TN7, and then I will use, add a few little shadows here and there with TN8. Those are my two favorite combo colors for any kind of branch, branch action <laughs> with Spectrum Noirs. TN7 and TN8 are awesome for like browns. And then I am going to color some of the leaves with CG2. So I'm going to do all the tiny little leaves. I'm going to use basically all the greens in the original set of Spectrum Noirs to make my leaves. So it's a different, it's kind of a variety of, of different greens. So here I am base coating these sort of larger leaves with the CG1, which is a very light green. And that's when I realized it didn't do the end of the branch. <laughs> And then I'm going to add in some DG3, which is really dark. And so to try to bridge that gap, I'm going to put in some DG2. But even then, it's still the CG1 is still really, really light. And so what I'm going to wind up doing is taking the tip of my CG1 marker, which is the super light one, to the tip of the DG3, which is the very dark one, and use that to blend the colors together. So it kind of creates a middle tone that does a nice job of blending the CG1 with the DG2 and 3 that I had added into the center of those leaves. And I'm not really going for a smooth blend. Like I know some people really like to have like a really smooth blend and I could have worked at this probably a little bit harder um, to get it super smooth, but I like that texture. I kind of like the to have some color variation in uh, the leaves and other things that I'm coloring. So I purposely don't make a super smooth blend. Sometimes, but not always. <laughs> anyway, so for my pink flowers, I'm using BP6 and then blending that out with BP2. I wanted like a super bright pink. And I'm doing that on the stamens as well. And then for the center part, I'm going to use CT3 which is a bright yellow, and then add a little bit of OR1, which is orange, and then blend that back out with the CT3 to get kind of a little bit of an orangey yellow on the centers. And then I wanted to pull some yellow in to the flowers from because of there's so much yellow on the toucan, so I decided to add some Nouveau Crystal Drops in Dandelion Yellow to the centers of those red flowers, and I cleaned those up a little bit with my super fine pointed tweezers. And then this is a really fast look at uh, the rest of the brand or the leaves. Um, this dark one was JG6, and then I blended that out with DG3. Um, then this one I'm going to do um, DG2 and DG3, and then I will kind of fill it in with by doing that tip to tip method between the two colors to kind of get a middle ground going. And you'll see there's a lot of bleed on some of this green, and so I will fix that in a second. And so I'm not sure that the Bristol paper is really the greatest for Spectrum Noirs. I did want to try it, um, but it does bleed quite a bit. And since I'm kind of heavy handed with my blending, um, I'm not sure that Bristol is really the best choice. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't super great either. Now here's my white glaze pen. This is what I use a lot to clean up mistakes or, or areas that bleed over. Um, when I'm coloring and it doesn't matter what I'm coloring with it works for everything and like that white on the blue I'm just gonna color right over that with some blue and it's gonna be fine <laughs> so I love the white glaze pen I use it a lot I don't think anybody no matter how great you are at coloring uh, is perfect so that helps me clean up mistakes Now I had to have sparkle so I'm adding some crystal drops in sherbet shimmer to the pink and I'm really just kind of squishing it around with the nozzle on the bottle to get it to like kind of fill in those places on the leaves and then I also added uh, Spectrum Noir sparkle marker in clear to the toucan bodies. Uh, this is some yellow cardstock that I that is Elizabeth Craft Designs soft finish cardstock and I cut that out using the stitched hearts dies from Elizabeth Craft Designs and I'm going to add that to the front of that A2 top folding card base in white. So I've arranged all of my leaves and flowers and my two cans on top of my heart. And so I mean, I've adhered them all, most of them down. And I did that using a combination of three millimeter 
Well, Smith Craft Science double sided adhesive tape and then my quickie glue pen. And you'll notice as I'm doing this that I don't adhere much of the piece to the actual paper it's on. Um, I leave a lot of like the flowers and the leaves unadhered. I guess that's the right word. Um, to add some subtle dimension. And then I added a little bit of foam tape to the back of the pink flowers for additional dimension. But by not adhering every bit of those flowers down, it helps um, add some like subtle shadow and parts like pop up and stay down. And it just, it adds a cool effect. Now that uh, sentiment is you're the best from Hero Arts Everyday Sayings. And I did just stamp that directly onto the card base using VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And now I'm just adding a, a knot with some black and white checked ribbon. Unfortunately, this is some very, very old uh, Stampin' Up! ribbon that is no longer available, but I will do my best to find a substitute uh, in the supply list if you really like that ribbon. And you're gonna see here, I'm gonna uh, add very little adhesive to the back of the heart as well. I'm using 10 millimeter Elizabeth Craft Designs adhesive tape here, because again, it is going to provide a slight, like that heart's going to pop up slightly on the edges and create some subtle dimension. And I just really like that effect. And there I've just wadded up a micro glue dot and put it behind the bow or the knot to just keep it in place. And that is the completed project. Hope you like it. I thought it turned out pretty cute. I really like the way the bills came out. I think, I mean, they kind of blend together, but they're sort of cool all at the same time. And it's just such a cute stamp set. And I like that the colorful um, toucans are kind of the focus by leaving the rest of the cards simple in black and white. So thank you so much for watching. I really missed you guys. Um, as always, you can find the supply supplies linked in the video description and over on my blog. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram at blacksheep303. And I welcome and love comments, suggestions, ideas, whatever. Thanks so much. Have a great day.